Welcome to Prepare the Way, a show dedicated to all matters related to the new evangelization. I am your host, Martha Fernandez Sardina, Director of the Office for Evangelization of the Archdiocese of San Antonio and Director of Prepare the Way Enterprises, a ministry dedicated to helping Catholics become everyday evangelized evangelizers. That's the reason why Jesus came to earth and we are celebrating the first coming of Christ this Christmas. I have the pleasure of having with me today Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller, the Archbishop of San Antonio. Welcome, Archbishop. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. It's a pleasure to be here with you and, and to be able to connect with uh, many people in our Archdiocese and even beyond. It's great to have you to discuss this very important happening in the history of mankind, which is the fact that God became man and dwelt among us. I think we as Christians talk about it so often that we might sometimes forget the significance of the birth of Christ. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the, it's true that this event has changed history in the past, in the time of Jesus himself, and then all the generations after him, including us and those to come. Is, uh, is Jesus God with us who has uh, made the big difference uh, of people's lives and, uh, and not only our lives here on earth, but in eternity. So he's a uh, it's, it's with a great expectation that we welcome the Lord once again to our lives and to our society, our families, people who are, who are uh, watching this program. Best wishes to you and, and the opportunity to wish you a very blessed Christmas. Merry Christmas. Jesus lives with us. Jesus is for you and with you. And I am so happy to be able to talk about Jesus Christ the Lord as we prepare ourselves for, for Christmas. And I love the fact that in your greeting and your wishes you have quoted scripture because St. Paul says that if God is for us, who is against us? So mm -hmm. not only is God with us, Isaiah, but also St. Paul in Romans, God is for us. He's for us. You said we need to welcome as we prepare to welcome Christ. Now, he is not coming, I don't think he is, this week in the flesh but he comes to us many times and expects that we now be born in him. I've heard you mm. speak about being born in Christ. What does that mean? Well, what I was uh, trying to convey with that thought is um, we are most likely familiar with the Posadas. The Posadas is that journey with Mary and Joseph to find a home for Jesus. So the birth of Christ will have that sense of, of uh, being welcomed. And uh, as a matter of fact, last night we had a very beautiful posada in which we were walking with Joseph and Mary. And, um, and I think we're familiar with what is to be welcomed. All of us, we want to be accepted, to be uh, understood, to be embraced. And welcoming is a very important part of our, of our humanity. And Jesus was welcomed. But what I brought about the other day, the, last night, is uh, that not only we, we need to welcome the Lord into our lives, which is very important, and we are familiar with that thought. Mm -hmm. But I want to, to bring now to our reflection, to deepening the sense of Christmas, yes, how to have a new birth in Christ, to be born in Christ. And it's because Jesus wants to welcome us. Jesus wants to welcome me hmm. into his divine life. So we welcome Christ. That's the yes. focus of Christmas a lot of times. And of course, with Las Posadas, sure. giving Christ, yes. uh, finding Joseph, mm -hmm. finding for Mary and, and Jesus an inn. But you're saying that the God Almighty, creator of the universe, who became man, wants to have him become the inn for us. He wants exactly. us to be born in him. Is well, that why Jesus says in John 3 that we need to be born again? To be born again. There are, uh, in, uh, in many passages in St. Paul, the idea of uh, we, we are new creation in Christ. We become anew in him. And so um, uh, it's a different experience. Because usually we say, well, in welcoming Jesus, Jesus come to me. Mm. And I remember also the words of Jesus that says, 
come and follow me, you know. In other words, the move that we need to do to be more like him, to, to reflect his very life, and to be centered in him more than ourselves. So I think Christmas um, can have a different meaning if we mm -hmm. look about how I need to, to, to place myself and accept the invitation of Jesus to be part of Him, hmm. to live in Him, to be shaped by Him. I love that uh -huh. because so often we think of Christianity, hopefully not mm -hmm. that much anymore, but so many times we have thought about Christianity as uh, simply following the rules and the do's and the don'ts. You know, sometimes people say that Catholics have all these do's and don'ts and these mm -hmm. rules and regulations. You're talking about a whole different reality for which the do's and don'ts are important, but mm -hmm. you're quoting St. Paul who says in Corinthians, so whoever is in Christ is a new creation. New creation. The old things have passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, new things have come. That we are to become part of the Godhead in so far as a sharing in the divine life is. Yes. Well, we, we are. We are already part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt about it. But is the, the emphasis that we make. And so, as we welcome the Lord, will be worth thought to think how He welcomes us. And usually, when we are welcomed, we are touched by the people who are saying, the, your ha my house is your house. Mm -hmm. Come in. We are shaped by what we see and experience in that relationship. And the Lord wants to welcome us into his life. And uh, this is quite uh, uh, not easy because we try in many ways to shape uh, scripture, to shape what we hear, what we see, what people bring to our attention. But to be sh shaped ourselves, mm -hmm. in this case by Christ, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the Lord, who is saying, I am welcoming you into my very life. So you will be invited to a new way of thinking, to develop new virtues, attitudes, and to be shaped by Him. To become like Him in every way. You like know, St. Paul also says one of my favorite scripture passages, mm -hmm. he says in Galatians 2, mm -hmm that I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live, meaning I still obviously have a name and last right. name and uh, eat and drink, no longer I, but Christ lives mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. So it's taking on the whole attitude of Christ, as St. Paul says elsewhere, take on the mind of Christ in Philippians. It's taking on Jesus' way That's of right. looking at things, of judging mm -hmm. things, of loving. Yeah. Precisely what you said, to have the mind of Christ. But we need to go through that process of being welcomed by Him and to accept this move of God coming to us, but coming to us in that inviting peace. And I, I you know, at Mass, when we say in the doxology, through Him, with Him, in Him. And uh, and really, it, 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 it leads us in a very different dynamic when I am trying to live my life here on earth and for eternity for the, by the perspective of living in Him. You know and, what this reminds mm -hmm. me of is when Jesus says that no one can serve two masters, and He's specifically talking mm -hmm. about money. You can't mm -hmm. serve money and God. But I've always thought to myself, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, that also means I cannot serve myself as master of my own life and Jesus. Either he's mm -hmm. the master or I am, mm -hmm. which means that if I am going to fully allow him to welcome me in, that means I need to give up my yes. own uh, mm -hmm. egoisms, my own desires even, my own plans for my life. Yes, well, uh, yes, basically it is. But um, when Jesus welcomes us, is not that he welcomes us to to manipulate our will, 
to manipulate our, manipulate our thoughts. His inviting is always as people who have been created by God and sharing in God's will and sharing in God's mind is, is such a sense of respect that he will not invade mm. us. The inviting peace is that if we have been created to the image of God and Jesus, God with us, God for us, is, uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, is, is the best expression of who we are called to be. Mm -hmm. You know, God who took flesh. So to become like him is the greatest thing that could happen to a person. And, uh, and then it's when we have to surrender ourselves, but knowing that we are going to receive the fullness of life in him. Exactly, because when I say that, that I uh, mm -hmm. cannot continue to be my own master, mm -hmm. I say that out of a conviction, Archbishop, that I've had since a young mm -hmm. age, and that is, and one day I'll make a t-shirt or a bumper sticker that says, God wants only and always my good. And if mm -hmm. he only wants my good and always wants my good, and that includes suffering in the cross too, yeah. then I can trust him mm -hmm. fully. And then I don't have to fear allowing the Lord to be the master of my life. Mm -hmm. When we come back from our break, we'll develop this a little further to help us, all of us, and you who are listening to us and watching us today, to prepare well for this great feast of Christmas and for the rest of our lives. We'll be right back with Prepare the Way. Don't go away. Welcome back to Prepare the Way. I'm your host, Martha Fernandez Sardina, Director for Evangelization. I'm here with Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller, talking about how during this Christmas season, we are to allow the Lord to welcome us into his life divine. Archbishop, we're talking about not only welcoming Jesus, but allowing him to invite us. And in fact, he does. He says, come to me. And he says, mm -hmm. come and follow me. follow me. How do we do that so that we might live in Christ? Well, uh, the Lord, uh, if you recall, for example, the life of Our Lady, when she was invited to be the mother of Jesus, that made, in fact, her motherhood for all of us mm. available and there. She needed the assistance of the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus invites us into his life, he will assist us with the presence of His Spirit. And the presence of His Spirit will get inside of us in a way, in a respectful way. But that presence of the Holy Spirit moving our, our wills, our minds, our senses, will allow us to become really followers of Jesus. And a little earlier, we, we made uh, some comments about how when we invite someone, in some way we shape the person. We, we respect the person, but we shape the person with the characteristics of that home or that family or that, uh, the people mm -hmm. who, who are present there who welcome this new, this stranger. In the case when Jesus invites us in, by the power of His Spirit, we are able to think more like the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're able to act more according to Him. So really we become followers of Him. And, and hopefully these this, uh, few days before Christmas and Christmas Day and the Christmas season will be the opportunity for us to, to reflect and to see if we are following Jesus mm -hmm. or if we are adapting Jesus to my life or to our lives or if we are connecting with Him based on His invitation to breathe His own life, you know, I love to have His thoughts, His actions. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise we'd be sort of shaping Jesus to my stature, to mm -hmm. my, I would be the mold, and He has to fit into what exactly. I think about life. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is totally the opposite. Yes. I need to adapt myself right. to this loving and trustworthy and, God. And is the process of conversion, mm -hmm. and is the process the St. Paul experience, when he said, I don't, I don't, I don't live myself anymore. It's Christ who lives in me. It's not my I, mm -hmm. but it's His life in me. It's Jesus who lives in me. So uh, our hope is that this experience of Christmas and the many ways that Jesus comes into our lives, mm -hmm. 
that we will accept his personal invitation. And as we were having the posada yesterday, and the posadas of the last few days, um, as we journeyed together towards Christmas, uh, I was able to reflect in how when, when we are welcomed is, is a way to recognize the dignity that we have, or when I put it in my own life, the dignity that I have as a person, and in this case as a child of God, because it's not a life different than Jesus' life. Mm. It's his, his own life who, who I'm called to live in, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit will guide us, and, and so posada means a different thing. And I cannot give posada to somebody else. I cannot welcome you into my life mm -hmm. as a Christian if I have not experienced the life of Christ in my, in my own. You know, it's, what you're saying is so powerful because I sometimes, when I see the, the degree of selfishness and egoism and self-seeking in the world, I sometimes am tempted, and I see it in my own life, I, I must admit, I am t sometimes tempted to, to say, is this ever going to change? And I come to the conclusion that the more we Christianize the world, we evangelize, the more we will have a change because we surely cannot love others unless the power of the Holy Spirit is in us. As St. Right. Paul says in Romans 5, the mm -hmm. love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're saying, and probably not only because you're a missionary of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit can and does equip us to change, to be transformed yeah. into Christ. All the life of Our Lady Mary, the mother of Jesus, our mother, changed. Mm -hmm. But it was changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, like in the Gospel of Luke it says, it's by the power of the Spirit. And um, I am more convinced that if I want to live my Christian life in the Catholic Church and to promote good, the goodness of God, I need the assistance of the Holy Spirit to become more like Him. And that is not something of my own. I will have to surrender, and that is a calling uh, that we receive every day. But just to know, that is what we're contemplating today, you know, uh, that, uh, I, that, that I am welcomed by, by Jesus. And as I ponder how the Lord welcomes me, then is when I can welcome others, I can be a posada for others. When I myself, I had been uh, receiving home, or being at home with the Lord, and in Him, and, and, and I'm thinking like uh, I will be celebrating the Eucharist tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. The Mass is, is really the Lord who is accessible to us, who is inviting us in to His mystery, the mystery of His death, res uh, passion, death, and resurrection, you know. It's, it's would you life say, is my life. Would you say that the Eucharist is probably uh, the, one of the most powerful ways in which we can uh, be at home with Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit yeah. to transform us from within? This is the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, in the celebration of the Mass, in the midst of the community, in the proclamation of the Scripture. I mean, in so many ways, in having in mind the needs of others, but it's very difficult to, to absorb the graces that come in that presence of the Lord if we have not uh, 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 come to the awareness and the acceptance that the Lord welcomes me, that He opens the doors for me. And that comes another text from the Scripture when the Lord says, you know, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And whoever comes through me will experience the fullness of life. Mm -hmm. But it's through him, in him. 
And and then is when we become really us and ourselves. But it's uh, in that context. Once I was giving a talk at a parish, mm -hmm. and uh, this lady asked me, w what, what, in your opinion, does it mean to be truly evangelized? And I said, it's when God no longer is on the outside, but now lives on the inside. And I'm reminded of that because of what you're saying, to live in Christ and to uh, do everything in Christ, through Christ, and with Christ. As we uh, wrap up our time together, Archbishop, what would be some practical things that you might want to recommend to our viewers and listeners as they prepare to make their hearts in in for Jesus and to be in the heart of Christ? Well, just looking at these uh, uh, beautiful statues of St. Joseph and Our Lady, if we can look carefully, Jesus is at the center and they are absorbed in him. The attention is the life of Christ in their midst. And I will invite the people, our audience, to, to consider the centrality of the Lord. And even just to approach it from the perspective of looking at Jesus, trying to get into his mind, mm. trying to ponder some of his actions. Uh, uh, you know, this is just one angle to look at at Christmas. It's not everything about Christmas. It's not all the possibilities. But just to, to be more centered in him and maybe something like uh, Jesus in the manger, to have it on our tables, to have it uh, in our dining rooms, in our living rooms, uh, and, and to try to get into, into his mind, uh, to try to connect with him. Uh, and though it's true that he come to save us, but I invite you just to, to take that possibility of looking at him, to try to get into his mind, into his heart, into his thoughts. And maybe some of the actions of Jesus have come to you because you listen to the scripture, because you have seen, the, hear the stories of Jesus. You have met Jesus in many ways, but get into the sight of Christ. And so he with his Holy Spirit will change you and your life. And eventually you will see a move that will lead you to be more like him. And then you will be able to say that Christmas is now here, that Christmas is part of you because the reason of Christmas that is the Lord has welcomed you into his very life. And he doesn't want you anything else but his very own to be your own. Thank you, Archbishop Merry Gustavo, Christmas. for this beautiful message. And as Merry we Christmas. conclude this show, and we wish you all a very Merry Christmas, I ask the Archbishop to give us his blessing. And may God, that is love, who has revealed his love to us in the Word that became flesh, bless you. Jesus, thank you for welcoming us into your own life. May we absorb what you offer to us and may we be a reflection of your welcoming as we relate to others. At Christmas Day and during this Christmas season. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Archbishop Gustavo. And to you, friends, we will meet again on another show of Prepare the Way. For all details on how to prepare well for Christmas and throughout the year, visit our website or call us at the Office for Evangelization. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he smile upon you and be gracious to you. May he show you his countenance and grant you his peace. Thank you.